Okay, so I'm here for ConceptBlogger.com um, with David and Olivia um, from Huntington Beach, California, originally. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your, uh, what kind of music do you play, and uh, what do you got going on right now? Well, we're here in New York, and uh, it's a pleasure being here. We're on tour. It's our uh, first East Coast, first East Coast swing. swing here, and so we're here for a little bit. We are an Americana duo. Uh, Americana being blues, country, folk, all American roots music. And we kind of blend them together with a little California flair um, to them. I kind of like to call it a melancholy sweetness. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what we're about. We you know, kind of pick from people that were uh, influential to us, from Patsy Cline to Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash to uh, the Rolling Stones, you know, and so it's just. It kind of spans the spectrum, even contemporary, such as, um, you know, we often get compared to the Civil Wars or the Lumineers or something like that. But uh, we're just happy that Roots music is seeing, seeing a resurgence uh, right now. So, yeah. What? Just look into the Looking camera. Looking into the camera. <laughs> 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 yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just it's so hot. Yeah, you know, you want to look into the person's face, but you know. Yeah. Um, actually, that's a great thing when I'm on the stage too. Just a stage presence thing. If somebody's taking pictures of you. Look at them. Yeah. I don't understand why like people like really don't look at the photographer in the pit. Okay, I understand you don't want to stare at them, but at the right. same time, I kind of feel like as a photographer in a pit, I'm like all the fans that aren't here. Yeah. Right now. We're up close and personal, getting to see. It's a good way to think about it. I've never thought about that. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm not me. I'm not some. I'm just some guy with a camera. Yeah, but I'm all your fans that aren't see here. This angle. Yeah, or just right. want to see you that maybe you're in yeah. their bedroom somewhere that all they have is an internet connection. Right. You know. Right. Um. So how did you get together? How did you meet? Uh, it's about almost two years ago that we met. Um, we were both on the same bill at uh, Pig and Whistle in Hollywood. And I played a little earlier on in the set and didn't know that he was actually playing later. He didn't know that I was playing, so it was kind of a happenstance of the universe. And I started off my set with a little John Straplin, Mercedes Benz. And he was there um, playing some different music than the rock band that he was a part of at the time. And kind of was trying to find a voice or knew he wanted a voice for the song that he wrote called Key to My Heart, and I guess when I started singing, it was the voice he heard in his head. <laughs> yeah, it just went off, and I uh, was sitting with my wife, and we both turned to each other, and uh, we're like, that's the voice, that's the voice that we hear, that's that's it, and uh, next time we, first time we met up, actually, because I got her information through a friend of hers and whatnot uh, that was there, and uh, the first time we met up, was in a studio in North Hollywood, and uh, we recorded that song, which we re-released on this this uh, record. On the scene. Mm -hmm. And "Key to My Heart" was a finalist in the Gretsch songwriting uh, competition. Yeah, songwriting, it was a songwriting competition, competition uh, last summer, and uh, we were just happy, thankful, blessed that that was uh, what uh, came about. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of we got so much. Uh, positive feedback from what we were doing together that um, we were, we said, hey, let's go in the studio and let's record a David and Olivia full record. And so we went to the studio and... Um, the end of last year. Yeah, end of last year, winter. And uh, asked for this new record out. It's just amazing. <laughs> I, I find it funny that the this new record really sounds very summerish. There's a lot of like, you know, bright happiness, love songs type of things. And um, I, I thought it was kind of funny that you recorded it in the dead of winter. Yeah. But then I thought, yeah, the dead of winter in Cal we're, California, we're, we're in Southern, Southern, Southern California, yeah. is not quite like the dead of winter anywhere else. Yeah, that's where we kind of get that California country sound uh, that we have. You know, we're, we're not from Nashville. We're not from um, Texas. We're California kids. We're, I surf. We live by the beach, and so we write music that's kind of indicative of what we're doing there. We were traveling so much up and down California, wineries, wine bars, that that's probably why you feel that, that summer feeling from the record, and 
it only made sense to kind of sit on it and, and really release it um, beginning of spring of this year so that it could kind of flow into and really fit kind of like a soundtrack of summer. Okay. What's your what's your songwriting process like when you when you actually sit down to write a song? Does you know do you do the music? She does the lyrics. Does it is it like what's what's your what's it usually like? Um, it's a subconscious collaborative effort uh, when we write music. Mm -hmm. We will have like for instance last year, like we said, we've been touring up and down the West Coast, playing wineries and wine bars, and we got to talk about a lot of different things from. Relationships, life lessons, past histories, uh, good stuff, bad stuff. And we got a real good chance to learn uh, about e each other. And so when we sat down to write the songs, whether it was me writing a song or her writing a song or whatnot, um, we hashed those out. They were as if we were both there writing them, even if we were writing them by ourselves in a, in a quiet room or something. I don't think we're quite as, like, if I have an idea, send it over to him, do something with it, David, have fun, it's kind of the same with him, he'll show me, and it's it's always like a very collaborative uh, show and tell sort of a situation where... And then we take it back into our respective kind of private areas, yeah. and then kind of think about it, and sit on it, and hash it out, mm -hmm. in our own minds, um, at least that's the way I do it, mm -hmm. and I just need complete silence, <laughs> and just a, a room with a guitar. And that's hard to do with a 20-month-old baby living around the house. <laughs> but uh, so that's that's the good part. And that's kind of how we write. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, first Matt. Congratulations on having your video premiered in uh, Guitar World magazine. Thank you. That was how a huge that? thing for me as yeah. a guitar player growing up. That's exactly what I, what I was thinking. I was like, wow, yeah. that must be so big. It was It was just really cool when we got that um, here at Big Picture Media. They sent it over to us, and I was just like jumping out of my boots. Uh, because just growing up, I started playing guitar at 13, and I've always loved rock, and all my heroes were in that magazine. Uh, from Slash to Joe Perry to, you know, Dimebag, Daryl from Pantera, anybody that I loved playing guitar, and they were in there, and I would go over that as a teenager, sit there, read the columns, read the lessons, and go over all the different, you know, guitar stuff, and it was just really cool for me. It was, you know, it was like a, in a little small way, it was like a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> One but more yeah. thing you can check off the bucket list. Yeah. But I mean, it was for a song that's, you know, a not specifically a, a guitar song, you know, it's more of yeah. uh, just a song. So, it, yeah, it's not like it's got any crazy riff in it or anything like that, but however you do it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no rhyme or reason, so. Um, things must seem like they're going at light speed right now. Um, you Especially made, being in New York, yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you just made your television debut in Southern California. Yes. You have a live appearance about to be released um, through Real the Country website, The Boot. Yeah, what we're, else, we're what, very excited about. And, very, and you've got the tour going on here. Is there anything else that we should know about that you've... You're we just are kinda... subconsciously writing yeah. right now. Yes, in New York. Uh, we were in South by Southwest. We were writing a song. Like We came back from a, a gig in March. We were down there at South by Southwest in Austin, and we were both a couple beers. Came back, we're tired, but still kind of feeling like the just muse. Feeling, feeling the, the muse. muse, yeah, feeling yeah. it. I sat down with the guitar, and uh, Liv was—I think she was washing her face or brushing her teeth—and and I started playing, and I started. It was an idea that she had had, and I started playing with it, and then we wrote like two more ideas off yeah. of that. And, and I still have those on my iPhone, and we're going to sit down and, and hash those out uh, later on this fall, and we're going to be back in the studio in the wintertime. We're just going to be traveling so much this yeah. year. This year's been all about kind of getting out of California and experiencing music, and our music, in uh, different parts of America. We'll be yeah, back in Texas this fall. After every trip, we tend to have like a resurgence of new ideas, new uh, concepts, and I'm just excited about what this whole year of traveling around and doing our music will bring in the record, you know, recording process. The yeah, whole thing is just keep creating good music, good performance, um, and surround yourself with the right people, and things will happen. Mm -hmm. it's good things will happen. 
So you, I did see a an interview that you'd done at South by, and you have an, a relative that was in the Alamo. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh no, that story. Mm -hmm. That that is some history right there. And then you go to Texas if you're a descendant of a defender of the Alamo. That's like Texas is so prideful. It's such a, it's like its own little country. It's big enough to be its own little country. And uh, it's bigger than most countries. It's bigger than most. Countries, <laughs> yes. And um, this one, my. Uh, I'm the 14th generation from that, and his name was Gregorio Esparza. His brother fought on Santa Ana's side, on the Mexican side, so it's a real big story. Really? He fought for uh, Texas, and when Santa Ana's army from Mexico rolled over the Alamo like it was nothing, he, uh, his brother said, hey, would you mind giving my my brother, Gregorio, a proper burial. He said, why? You know, he was fighting for Texas. You know, a lot of the people said, Santa Ana saw that, hey, this is special, this is, this is family, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so he was the only uh, person that was on the opposite side, on Texas' side, to get a proper Christian burial. And you can go to his burial there at the Alamo and whatnot, and he's in books and movies. And so it's, it's kind of cool, you know, it's, it's this uh, small piece of history. That's awesome. I'm connected to. Awesome. And lastly, uh, da, 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 lastly, I guess it's lastly. Um, you recently cut your hair. Uh, oh, as yes. a long-haired, freaky person myself, what's up with that? <laughs> so, about every five years, I cut my hair for this little um, uh, charity called Locks of Love, and they give, um, they create wigs for cancer patients, little boys and girls, but mainly little girls, uh, and uh, so there's going to be a little girl that's pretty stoked to have long curly hair, <laughs> and me being a father, it just seems like the right thing to do, and I get checked up, you know, so, yeah, but uh, it's, a, it's a cool little beautiful part that I can do, because I can't do too much, but because uh, we're always on the road or doing something <laughs> like that, and, uh, but yeah, the hair, so I figure that's pretty cool. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Keep growing that hair. Thanks, Liv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So this has been David and Olivia, and they'll be on the road soon. They're the the 15th of June. They're in the way station in Brooklyn, and on the 16th of June, they're at the living room here in New York City in Manhattan. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll be seeing you on the road. Right. Awesome. Cheers. Bye.